You have an awesome fantasy football league, and that league deserves an awesome fantasy football trophy. Head over to FantasyChamps.com. They have tons of incredible gear and swag to celebrate championships. And even better right now, buy that league a trophy, toss in one of those $60 rings with the promo code free ring, and that ring will be free. A trophy and a ring. Can't beat that. FantasyChamps.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Sent a little old timey gangster over there. Yeah, the start. No! The start was a little weird. Yeah. See. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome in, one and all. Tuesday, August twentieth, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. It is prime time. It is draft season. It is our job to get you ready to go for your drafts, and they are coming soon. I am in the middle of two drafts, two slow drafts right now. Uh, one for our family league, and then one for um, a point per first down league with some of the industry's best and um that's been a that's been a wild draft. It's been fun oh, to finally kind of put your money where your clock, mouth is. Forgot. You're on the clock right now? Yeah. I think you've been on the clock in our family league for I have. for I, a little while. I got the notification last night <laughs> and I meant to talk to the boy cuz we're co-managing that's that That's right. That's right. And then it just slipped my mind. We have a fun show for you today. We got sleepers our individual sleeper picks on today's episode. We've got undrafted gems mm -hmm. on today's episode. We've got news that we've got to talk about. But I guess we have uh, a very large, aggressive, prehistoric <laughs> announcement to make. <laughs> Go for it. No, <laughs> Right. It can only be contained for yeah. so long. Yeah, you know? this is like two minutes I had to wait for this. Oh, the Megala Bowl. It's a lot like indigestion. Is <laughs> Here it is going to give you acid reflux. It is open. The Megala Bowl is the largest fantasy football league in the known universe. It is for the Foot Clan. It is awesome. Listen, we just talked about yesterday that we had all these submissions for our Listener League, which is awesome, wonderful, thank you, and almost all of you did not make it. But if you win the Megala Bowl, you are in the 2025 Listener League. What is the Megala Bowl? It is our Fantasy League. We're all playing in them. We have the entire Foot Clan playing in these leagues. It is 12, 12 team leagues. Our scoring format that we use in the League of Record, it is better than ever this year in the past I don't know why probably because I'm stupid we've had like the top three teams from each one of these leagues make it into the playoffs to the to the big you know uh, journey at the end and, and what that does is it's like I don't know you I feel like early in the season you kind of know if you're going to be one of those top three but in all of our leagues we're in you know the, the our league of record the top six make it in so we're doing that Half of your league's getting in the playoffs this year. Last year, for the sake of our commissioners, because, you know, we got 20,000-plus people in these leagues, we didn't have trading. Oh. And you want to know what that did? Made made people sad. Yeah, it made me It sucked. It's like, wait, we don't want – we want this to be the most fun league out there in the world. Trades are back on. The waiver wire is on. This is an awesome regular league, except – this is with the Foot Clan. These are with your people, with our people. People have made lifelong friends in the Megala Bowl. And this year, in addition to making the winner receive an automatic entry into next year's Listener League, we are giving away a UDK for life to the winner, too. If you win the Megala Bowl, you're just stamped. You are in. So MegalaBowl.com is the easiest way, or you go to the Fantasy Footballers and just you know, go to the, the Foot Clan tab, and you can see the Megala Bowl there. All the rules, all the details, everything about the Megala Bowl is at MegalaBowl.com, but we want you in. We want you playing with us. The drafts are going to be held from August 31st through September 4th on the Sleeper platform. So go to MegalaBowl.com, 
and sign up and join a league. I'm not telling you which league time slot which draft I am time? in, which draft slot I'm in, because I haven't signed up yet. <laughs> I, I am, I I am signed up. <laughs> oh, yeah? I tested the system. Nice. I made sure. I did not. But I'm not telling you either. Uh, we are, we'll all be in it. I already drafted. <laughs> People, I know you did not. No, you didn't. August 31st through September 4th are the draft times. Go get your spot. People have asked about whether the Mega Bowl is back and how they get in for the last couple of weeks because they are eager and ready to go. We mentioned it on the footcast for our supporters. But um, Megalobowl.com, head over there. Every single member of the Foot Clan gets a free entry into the Mega Bowl, one entry per person, and it's an opportunity to compete in the largest, most fun league imaginable with some really cool prizes, upgrades this year. Now, I said you get a free entry if you are a member of the Foot Clan. The Foot Clan is our, uh, they are our people. That gets you access to the Footcast, an extra episode every week. That uh, is a way to support the show. Gets you all of our in-season tools and resources, something we've been upgrading over uh, many years. And for a long period of time, in fact, the entire duration of the Foot Clan, that has been hosted via Patreon. Many of you are familiar with that. If you're a supporter of the show, that's the platform you've used to become a Foot Clan supporter. This year, we have made some very big changes to our Foot Clan membership. <laughs> yes, yes. Worthy of a horn. That seemed twice as loud. That was it, so okay, loud. all right. That I was, thought it seemed really loud. That was twice as loud as normal. You can't edit that in post now. You got to leave because we. that was so loud. I'm sorry if you went careening off the freeway. Um, But here's the deal. Uh, for many years, we've been hosted over on Patreon with the membership. And if you're over there right now, all of your membership will still work. Um, we're super thankful for you uh, having supported this podcast and all of your access to the footcast and everything. It works. Now, what we've done is we've had the request for many, many years to make things easier, make things simpler. I, they, a lot of people want to support the show. They want to access to all the premium features. But they just want like one way to do that. Like I don't want to buy the UDK over here and then like pledge to the support the Foot Clan and have two memberships. So we have not only brought the entire Foot Clan membership in house, our own system, this year at jointhefoot.com, but we have added the ultimate Foot Clan subscription for the very first time. This is the first time we've announced it on the show, mm -hmm. and so you can pledge to become a member over at jointhefoot.com, or if you would like. Everything in one subscription, one time a year that you pay for it, making everything easy and getting access to 100% of everything we do, which but, is... But Andy, uh -oh, the yes. voice of public opinion. I already got the UDK, so what do I do? Well, that we did uh, we did consider all of you amazing UDK uh, purchasers out there. If you would like to become an Ultimate Foot Clan member, which means you get access to the UDK every single year, DFS Pass, Dynasty Pass... Um, a brand new tool we're building out this year called the Ultimate Dashboard, which will be an in-season tool to import your roster, optimize your lineup, find spot starts, custom to your league, waiver wire, team news. So an in-season tool, we've never had this. That's also a part of it. Um, we'll credit you dollar for dollar for what you paid for the UDK. So if you just want to transition that right into an Ultimate membership, jointhefoot.com is where you do that. And that, that credit's automatic. We know if you got the UDK. So just when, when you go, you'll see it taken off. We, we want to make sure that the Foot Clan, you're, you're our people. We want this to be seamless, smooth, awesome. We've been working on this for years. Our in-season app is getting a giant renovation. I, I'm, we're really, really excited about this. This is just the way it should have always been built. But, you know, we started as three dudes in a, in a, in a bedroom upstairs and needed to use an off-site third-party resource. And now we're making this the right way. So I, I hope everyone's as, as excited about this as we are. Yep. So, um, and again, all members, whether you're an ultimate member, premier, regular member, you get a free entry into the Megalobowl. So these things kind of run uh, part and parcel. They're connected. And you can sign up at jointhefoot.com. And if you bought a UDK, you'll see those credits in there. If you're an existing patron and you want to switch over to become an ultimate member, you can do that as well. We will give you that credit. And uh, our team is... Uh, is, is ready to help you out with that. So uh, join the foot.com to become a member, get access to everything and get into the Megalobowl and megalobowl.com is where you find that link to join. 
I think we did it. I think yeah. we got through all of that. Very excited. Let's jump into the waiver wire. Welcome to the waiver wire presented by NFL Sunday ticket on YouTube TV. Now, before we jump into the waiver wire, just for a moment, I just want people to understand that there is a debate going on actively in the studio wait, between what? the premium deucer over there, Al Borland. Oh, wait, what? And who, who named him premium? I think and, Andy just did. Well, and, and Mike, you can take that away. The premium and, deucer? And our premium audio guy, Mike. Oh. Yes. And we're yes. In, they're yeah. in an active debate about whether or not Oh, now, see, that sounded, oh, that's regular. That sounded quieter. Totally different. That yeah. was a totally different sound. About on whether that it horn. was louder the first time. Now, Al, let's you're an honest man, a man of God. <laughs> yes, I am. Did you adjust the DBs between those two button pushes? I did not. Dude, that first button push was louder. Something happened. In in Slack, I was saying it was no louder. The decibels yeah. were the same and no no way. Yeah, he said back there gaslighting us like it yeah. didn't happen. Interesting. I would not lie to you. No way. No. That's but, fine. But just accept that it was louder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For today's waiver wire segment, we Premium are looking. Premium deucer my butt. I'm sorry. I was being very complimentary. Um, undrafted gyms. We're going to each pick a Jason's player. Jason's head flies back into I the just air. I saw Andy's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We are each picking a player that we don't believe will be drafted that you should pay attention to and maybe pick up. Um, for week one, you're going to be maybe regretting not having this guy on the roster. Sometimes you pick somebody at the very end of your draft, uh, on speculation. And then you go into week one and you're like, well, maybe I don't want this guy on my roster. These are some undrafted players. We think you might want to pick up that will feel a little bit better after week one gets done, but I'm not going to go first. Mike, I was in the studio with you. You were watching the film on this I, guy. Indeed I was. So let's, let's bring up this name. Darnell Mooney, wide receiver, now of the Atlanta Falcons, previously of the Chicago Bears. He's been one of the – we've talked about – like there's there's these invisible players who just maybe there's a blind spot to it, there's fatigue, I don't know. You just you don't really want to either talk about them, buy into them, realize that, oh, maybe this player will have some fantasy value. And Darnell Mooney has kind of just been one of those guys as I'm looking later at ADP, and I thought – I'm going to go check this out. Uh, I'm going to go watch every single target that Darnell Mooney got last year. And, dude, he's he's still Darnell Mooney. Like, I, I'm not saying he's – Wait, a, is that good? That is good. Oh, good. Yes, it is good. It's. I'm not saying he's a superstar wide receiver, but he is a good player, and he has, he has true afterburners, and he can make really tough catches. And watching the film – Oh, the, but, the oh thing, buddy. The thing that stood out the most about watching Darnell Mooney was – Holy crap, the, the the Chicago Bears quarterback play last year was – dude, you would you could go six targets in a row for Darnell Moody and go the, – the man was wide open. What is going on here? Someone give him the he ball. He was open short. He was open yes. intermediate. He was open down the field. I rolled over when Mike was in the middle of going through every target for Darnell Mooney. I watched six consecutive plays. There were zero catches. It gave me a new appreciation for Justin Fields' struggles <laughs> reading a defense. Some of them were the secret Bajant man as well. You know, it's so it just shows you how hard it is to qualify a player simply by the statistics. That what you saw on film was Justin Fields not able to read a defense and let yes. go of the ball at the right time. Mooney would be breaking open and there was no anticipation in the throws. So Mooney just kind of got deleted. Yes. I, I was I was sitting next to Mike. He's watching this film. And I hear just a just a hearty, real, genuine laugh. <laughs> I'm like, what? And I roll over. And he's like, check this out. It was it was a Tyler Bajant throw. Beautiful play design. Darnell Mooney wide open. No one within five yards, and he's in the end zone. And and, and both Bajant and Mooney rolling to the right, just in in sync. It just just a layup throw. And Bajant throws into the stands. <laughs> like yes. like that's not a joke. I think the ball went into the stands. I'm <laughs> like. So what happened? So Mooney's still Mooney is your yeah, message. Yeah, point being, Darnell Mooney, in, in my opinion, in my study that I just did, I think he is still a good, capable player. And so did the Atlanta Falcons. They gave him a three-year, $39 million contract, 26 of that guaranteed over the next two years. And it's just, what do you believe about the Atlanta Falcons? They're going to be running three wide all the time. And if Kirk Cousins is back to health, 
you can get you can get sustained production, not just a couple spike weeks. Darnell Mooney might be a player that that goes into your flex or your double flex, and you're 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 content with the production you're getting. And he is going extremely late in drafts, most often not even drafted. Yeah, no, I think that's a great name to to pick up. And and the point of these waiver wire pickups is if you're done with your draft, look at who you grabbed at the end, and and you might want to just consider dropping that dude and picking one of these guys up, at least. Mine and Mike's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to Andy's last. My pickup is who I drafted with the last pick in our last mock draft. It's Dontavian Wicks, uh, second-year wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. He has had a lot of buzz. If you're not on the, the, the Twitter sphere of fantasy football. I'm not familiar with Twitter, but whatever. No. You are, the, the, the X sphere of fantasy football. That sounds like fear of the letter X. Well, yeah, I mean, it's 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 Wix it's is pretty. Wix has got popularity among the Degens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's a really good football player. He passes the eyeball test. He also passes a ton of the metric tests. If if you look at, uh, there's only 26 wide receivers since 2011 who have hit a two yards per route run as a rookie with with at least 200 routes, and Wix is in that group. You look at how he's performed when given the opportunity it's been really really good now he was a rookie last year behind a crowded backfield Dobbs was good you had the breakout of Jaden Reed uh you know Christian Watson is supposed to be their wide receiver number one and all those people are still in front of him which is why Wicks is undrafted but if you listen to the coaching staff and Jordan Love talk about Wicks and the talent and the capability and the work ethic I think he's got a chance to come in here and really, really surprise, you want to attack ambiguous cores right. from good offenses. We've talked about this in the context of drafting Jaden Reed. And so um, I, I think Wicks, it, you saw it in the first preseason game, right? Like Jordan Love just drops back, rolls around, and there's Wicks wide open for a bomb touchdown. So I I, I would take a shot on them because the tip – to remember on our, on our top 10 tips and tricks episode was take dumps now, not later. You want guys you can cut after week one. If Dontavian Wicks comes out week one and he's 40% snaps, whatever, get rid of him. But if he comes out week one and all of a sudden he's really involved, he's going to be very, very good for fantasy. My turn? Your turn. Uh, hey, everybody. <laughs> Who, what? Who's that? It's me, Adam. <laughs> 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 I get out of town. I went into this show doc today to put in my undrafted gym as Adam Thielen. No, oh, no, aged hundred yard or a hundred reception wide receiver of the Carolina Panthers. And lo and behold, I find out that Adam Thielen was my undrafted gym at on this episode last season. Okay, so hold up. I saw also home run on that. Yeah, that was a home run. I mean, you want to talk about starting the season on fire. He helped your dynasty team in immense ways. You're welcome. But, <laughs> but I, I thought for sure you came into the show, Doc, saw that this was your pick last year and went, oh, you know what? He's okay this year as well. You came in to put him in. I came in independent of that knowledge to put Adam Thielen in. And you don't know how to found that him. out. Now, listen, Thielen. I understand. He's old. He's also one of the only 33 and older wide receivers in history to go over the 100 reception mark. When you look at the offense and Bryce Young and Dave Canales and what they're doing, and you look at the options that they have, I'm just going to bring it up. Like you could, Players of this age, when Fitzgerald was this age, Heinz Ward, they start the season pretty strong. He's also the one that has the rapport with Bryce Young, and if you trust Dave Canales to put his, his quarterback into a situation where he doesn't make mistakes – you rely on the most reliable player. And this is also not just – this is not blind. This is also including the fact that Deontay Johnson missed a bunch of time with the groin injury, just came back, limped off the field again. Now he's kind of back out of practice. But he but he has a couple of injuries already in camp. Xavier Leggett is brand new, right? Like this is a player I would expect to make an impact over time. But Adam Thielen, he didn't, he didn't play in the last preseason game alongside, you know – um, the starters like Thielen is still there, still reliable, and a hundred percent undrafted. Like nobody wants to touch that, even though he was the wide receiver twenty-five in fantasy last year. When you look at buying a couple of weeks, maybe buying six to eight weeks with a, in a deep wide receiver league, 
somewhere you need reliable. Like you just mentioned Mooney. You might be able to just all of a sudden just flex him. Like Thielen could give you some temporary support. And I, I'm sorry that you're such an ageist. I just, you know, reliable I'm hands. I'm about to die. <laughs> really reliable around the goal line. Let me sleep. <laughs> he's not He's not sleeping yet, Mike. He's going to be 34, man. He's <laughs> Yeah, he's napping right now. <laughs> you know that. I just want – look, when do you – it feels like you began the Adam Thielen voice at a time that you should be dishing it out to Keenan Allen then. Like, if if Thielen gets this voice, then Keenan's Keenan Allen – Keenan's not old. Keenan's fat. Keep up. <laughs> oh, come on. Keenan's the age that Thielen was last year when you were mocking him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What? Was that your know, attempt to Keenan? It, yeah. It's a little deep. It had, it had to be different. It's a oh, little it has to be. No, that was great. That was great. <laughs> All right. All so right. Um, those are our three names that we wanted to bring to light. Uh, thanks again to NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. Uh, by the way, I just saw they have the multi-view this year. They're updating the multi-view, but and they announced a uh, fantasy, a fantasy view. view. Uh, watch every game every Sunday when you bundle NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Sign up today at YouTube.com slash Fantasy Footballers. Local and national games on YouTube TV, NFL Sunday ticket for out-of-market games, excludes digital-only games, device and content restrictions apply. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Jason, put on your biggest surprise face, okay? Oh, yeah. Um, the commanders have announced it's shocking. Uh, Jane Daniels will be the team's starting quarterback. <gasps> what? You That's... imagine how in – He did it. <laughs> you know how embarrassed I'd be? Now have the Bears... If it hadn't have been him have... after I made him a my guy? <laughs> have the Bears announced yet anything about Caleb Williams being the starter? I thought they did that to start, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah. this is to what... Be, to be fair, the number three overall pick... I don't think has been announced as the starter. Unless well, I missed something about Drake May. No. I, I mean, He's got it, a shot now. It do, he does have a shot. It I was guess. looking like only Jacoby, and now it looks wide open. I'm glad they, they named him as a starter. I mean, they should have done this a long time ago. Everyone knew it a long time ago. But you, you kind of you have a feel for which rookie quarterbacks, even when they're drafted, are drafted to start week one or draft. You know, like, like J.J. McCarthy and Drake May, they were drafted – to compete and learn and maybe redshirt for a while or a couple of weeks. But like Bo Nix, you knew – like I, I was talking about this forever ago when Bo Nix was third on the depth chart on the first uh, Broncos official depth chart was like, he's your starter and you know it. Well, he, yeah, Peyton sucks, so he's doing this thing. Yeah, I mean, it's just when these quarterbacks, like J both Jaden Daniels and Bo Nix, they played so much college ball. I mean, they played way more than most of these other quarterbacks – uh, you know, five seasons, and if if you play five seasons of college ball and you're not starting week one in today's NFL, you shouldn't have been drafted in the first. Also, if Jacoby Brissett was still on the Commanders, you know that would well make a difference in the competition, right? Yeah, like if you sure. have a, a, a you know somebody that can actually compete, not yeah, the Jared Stidham. The Manders literally kicked out Sam Howell. They drafted him and said, "No, we we don't want a competition here." And Brissett too, right? Yeah, yeah, both. Um, well, I don't like this news. Curtis Samuel, turf toe, week to week. He missed the game last year with the toe injury. He had an ankle fracture and surgery in 2017. Part of the Curtis Samuel story has always been injury. Yeah. It has always been injury. It's been a problem making him a reliable fantasy option because he's in and out of your lineup. This is, uh, you know, significant. It changes how I would view the dart throw at the end of drafts on a Bills wide receiver. If you're deciding if you're a Shakir or Keon Coleman or or Curtis Samuel at this point, week to week is pretty ambiguous. Um, you know, from what I looked at, you know, these turf toes based on their grade determines two, three weeks or can be prolonged. And so we've seen Joe Brady and Curtis Samuel uh, or Curtis Samuel in the Joe Brady system before. He is more of a manufactured short yardage type of player and that leads me to believe that should he miss time uh, I was already bullish on your my guy Mike James Cook and Dalton Kincaid as quality assets but that's the that's the area of the field that I would expect them to step up to a little bit more 
I, I don't know. You know, it, it, it's good for all the other ancillary pieces, but those are the those are the guys that are being drafted right now that I just have even more confidence in. Mark Andrews missing practice with quote a very minor thing. Uh, we believe this stems from the car accident last week that he was uh, mostly unharmed in. That was from John Harbaugh. Justin Herbert returned to practice on Monday. That's exciting news for the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, who I believe they're leading the way in the preseason in yards before contact from the running backs. So before if you, contact? If you want any evidence that the system is matters. already yeah. starting to work. Wow. Giro. Um, Vidal Sassoon already had a pretty nice game back out on yeah, the field. That's not a that's not really a news blurb, but that is a takeaway of where last week it was all gloom and doom about Kamani Vidal Sassoon of not <laughs> him a, a day three rookie running back for the Chargers, not even making the team, goes out has a very strong preseason performance, and now the the tune is changing a bit. Yeah, uh, Mike Williams, Jets wide receiver planning to take team reps and practice next week. He's one of those players that, um, you know, at some point in the season is going to end up on the waiver wire list. I don't think he's being drafted anywhere, but I, if you know that he's going to like, they don't have great competition and they brought him in to be part of this offense. So I'd imagine at some point someone's taking a flyer. Like, would sure. you guys, you guys probably wouldn't spend the last pick no. just to throw him on IR or no, something. I'd, I'd be looking to pick him up. Like it, that's the you want to be a week early or so yeah. of when you think when you project that he'll actually start getting things going. It wouldn't be surprise surprising to me if he missed a couple games. Even if he starts active, it's going to take some weeks before he's really acclimated. And then uh, one other situation to monitor: at this morning's practice, Tyreek Hill was wearing a protective brace on his right hand, did some off-field work. You know, maybe it's just getting used to Tyreek. He seems to have a brace here or a brace there, and then he's back the next day. But uh, it did come through the wire this morning. Yeah, it's a it's a developing story, so pay attention. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Sleepers. All right, we're moving on to the sleepers episode, and uh, all of our consensus picks for this category are in the UDK at ultimatedraftkit.com. We define sleepers as players who are drafted later that you might not know about that are primed to emerge, and the truth is is that you don't generally have a sleeper, especially in today, like in this era of fantasy football, that doesn't have – reasons why they are being underdrafted in our minds, right? Like there are always a lack of excitement. It could be an injury. It could be a team change. There's, you know, if there's unanimous opinion about a player, they're not a sleeper, right? They're right, not right. sitting at the back of the draft. So uh, I'll go first today just because it kind of piggybacks with our yeah. news, um, which this player was in here before we got word that Curtis Samuel was banged up. And that is, Rookie wide receiver Keon Coleman of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I, I saw somebody comment uh, on X tagging us saying, you know, you talk about Brian Thomas and you talk about Lad McConkey and you talk about all of these other rookies and you don't mention Keon Coleman very often. And, I talk about good players. And So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, Keon Coleman has tremendous opportunity. The vacated targets in Buffalo, outrageous. They, you know, just Diggs and Davis vacated 241 targets. This was a player I just want to stress, like, that the Bills have been a competitive, well-run organization for a number of years. This was their pick at the wide receiver position. They they had the chance to draft Ladd McConkey or Jalen Polk or Adonai Mitchell or Jermaine Burton, other guys that went behind Keon Coleman in the draft. They knew they were missing their alpha in Stephon Diggs. They knew they were missing their deep threat in Gabe Davis. They made the choice. And so give that whatever weight you want. That was their decision. He was highly drafted. You have Curtis Samuel banged up. You have options that are very unproven. And, you know, Mac Hollins, this is a guy that makes a splash play here or there and ends up with 200 to 300 yards. That's like kind of what he does, right? Sure. Sometimes with shoes on, sometimes without. <laughs> 
Curtis Samuel never get, eating soup though. Samuel is and has been defined by the head coach, a player that they use in a bunch of different kind of ways. He's not a traditional outside route running on every play. You know, they're going to use him in the screen game and the underneath game and the handoff game. And those are things that are going to happen with Curtis Samuel. Don Kincaid, we know what he's got. The team went out and said, Keon Coleman's our guy. So from a sleeper perspective, rookie with opportunity with a, a top five quarterback in the NFL, um, to me, he's locked in based on the preseason in the X role. He's had 100% route participation with the starters. And now you've got another injury. So to me, you know, for some reason, like Keon Coleman feels bland because what he does and brings to the table as a wide receiver, it's not like Brian Thomas. There's like the explosive plays and the big over the top, like highlight reel plays, right? And Keon Coleman just kind of is well rounded. Like his best pro profile to me of what he looks like on the field and what he's capable of doing is Allen Robinson at his peak. He's an Allen Robinson type of player. And so to me, the opportunity is there. I do think it'll take him a little bit more time to settle in. Okay. But from a sleeper perspective, that's okay. I like taking shots. Brian Thomas, Keon Coleman, you know, Lad McConkey, finding value late in the draft that have opportunities like this. Coleman's sitting out there, and I look, Coleman could have two touchdowns in week one. He's a big bodied wide receiver. He's a competitive catch wide receiver. And then they obviously they they went to him a little bit in the preseason, I showing him on one side and saying, Go beat the guy, a la Allen Robinson. And so I just think he's being undervalued. I liked his film tremendously. He didn't test well in the 40. He was great in the uh, – what's the drill? The uh, the gauntlet. Great in the gauntlet. Made an impression on Buffalo. They went out and got him over those other guys. So, um, I don't mind it. Like, if people like Mike around you constantly say the guy sucks, that's why he's <laughs> where he's being drafted. No, I I do not mind the draft price at all. Keon Coleman is – like he is to me a rookie that – had he been if, – if he was being drafted up in, like, that Malik neighbors range, because that it's one of the things that could have happened. You know, people overreact to the, the landing destination. Then it would have been, like, absolutely not. There's no way I'm ever drafting Keon Coleman. He but, is directly next to Brian Thomas. He yeah, is, he's going wide receiver 43. He's two rounds later than, than Xavier Worthy, and he is about five or six picks later than McConkie. The, the difference to me of Keon Coleman versus Brian Thomas is – like, if if things work for Brian Thomas, I think he can replace that that Calvin Ridley role for the the Jaguars, where it's a heavy target volume. My concern with Keon Coleman is when I was watching him as a prospect. He, like, if you just watch Keon Coleman highlights from college, he is it, he is an absolute dominator. But his production didn't match with the with the highlights to me. And so it was the fear of, well, if he's just Gabe Davis on this team, maybe he's a better Gabe Davis, but it's just so that's about it's about upside between the two of them. But going in at, in the forties of the wide receiver core as a rookie, this is a player who should be on your target list. I agree. He's a great player to take a shot on. I mean, yeah. all the things that historically line up well are there for him. And, you know, you, you got to take shots at the end of your draft for explosive upside. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of us like Jermaine Burton, right? But there are some oh, like I, massive, Coleman, yeah. like even if you like the talent more, there are so many roadblocks in the way from yes. Burton's impact. Burton has no possible shot of being the number one target on his team. Yeah. That's actually a, an outcome that could, could happen for – Keon Coleman, even if it's unlikely, it's there. You could see the path for it. I always wondered too what like kind of impact Josh Allen's preferences might have made in taking that pick. I mean, this is a guy who's had Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs for years. Like, I'd be shocked if this team didn't say, "Hey, do you have do you have a player that you like right. and that you've seen in college?" So speculation there, but just you know, opportunity to be a number one target. I'll jump in here. Mine is more of a uh, cryogenic type of a sleeper. Like we are, we're deep freeze. Oh, okay. We would have to thaw out, but it's a, it's a name that people need to pay attention to. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. What? I don't like your name. I just saw it. it he doesn't like it because of the implications. Also, I don't know what that accent or <laughs> that was, what that was. I just, yeah, I mean, okay, <laughs> go, go on. Mike. It's Jalen Wright, rookie running back for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, is this a last name thing? 
Maybe. Oh man. Maybe. Mm. It's a good name. Mm. Now that now that you pointed out. Yeah. And now that's yeah. right in front of me. Maybe that's that's what happened. Uh, he is he's a bigger running back, but he is an absolute speed freak. Like this dude is really fast. We've been talking about how fast the the players on the Miami Dolphins are, and Jalen Wright is one of those guys. Already seen him come through with some explosive playmaking. He's ten, looked good in the preseason. Ten carries for fifty five yards and a tutty. He ran a four. Thank you. You're he welcome. ran. He ran a four three eight, and then you had Mike McDaniel talking about he McDaniel, coach of the Dolphins. Jason, thank you. Yeah, you uh, might be thinking Ronald McDonald. <laughs> yeah, not not a franchisee, head coach of the <laughs> Miami Dolphins. He's he was asked about who are the starters, and he said, "Who says we have to stop at two running backs? Maybe we can just have four. And he, talking about how much confidence he has in Jalen Wright. Look, it's it is for sure. It is A Chan. At least I, look, I say for sure is that's how I'm projecting it. A Chan and Raheem Moster are in front of Jalen Wright. But why you need to know this name is maybe you're in a deeper league, and you need to find really high upside players that you got to draft. You're in a 14 teamer, and you need someone who's on the bench. Jalen Wright has multiple paths because of A Chan and Mostert. Mostert is. For a running back, I, like I like to make fun of Adam Thielen, Mostert should be getting the oldest man voice because he's a running back and he's old. A-Chan we've, is smaller, and we've only seen him for one season, and we've seen him get hurt multiple times. Raheem if, Mostert has been on the injured list or injury report 14 times in his career, and Devon A-Chan was – three stints last year? Yeah. Preseason, midseason, Multiple later? Multiple games missed. The point being – if one of those guys were to unfortunately miss time, Jalen Wright would be the hottest pickup of the week, like a huge fab dump for Jalen Wright, depending on the amount of time that those guys are going to miss. It's investing in the Miami backfield. It's investing in a player who I think look, he's a rookie, so it's going to take time for him to learn. But if it's if it's down to it's A-Chan and Jalen Wright, dude, Jalen Wright's going to get so much work, and he's explosive and can – Hit those home runs for you, so it's a name that you need to be aware of. It's, maybe, maybe you're not drafting him in twelve teams. Maybe it, maybe your bench is big, so you are. Yeah, it, it's such a good name. I mean, it it, it really is. I I don't like uh, bringing up Jalen Wright because I I hope that Devon Achan has an awesome season. Yeah, you he's, know what it means for him to be relevant. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah. If Jalen Wright is good this year, that means Devon Achan probably got injured, um, or was in too big of a committee, or uh, yada yada. But the pathways for Jalen Wright, we just talked about how historically there are always multiple rookie running backs who end up right. in that RB1 territory. This year going into the season, you don't know who it is. It's going to be one of these guys that is is the um, benefactor of an injury in front of them. And so Jalen Wright has two different guys who have very clear paths towards being off the field. Or no well, and if one went down. That's what yeah, I mean. Yeah. It just Either one went one. down. Yeah, yeah. You, you, have a, you have a fork in the road. It's not just reliant on one player, the superstar going down. And our our note here on Raheem Mostert is the injury history. It's a CVS receipt. Oh. Which we all know what that means. Yeah, it's not, it's not a small amount of paper. No. <laughs> That's a tree. Many, many trees. That's a tree, yeah. All right, I've got another running back for my sleeper pick. Um I I did uh, this this one <laughs> no no I'm in I'm in like I had this is this is full disclosure I had gone in and I put this guy in with real tiny font into my sleeper and I was like nah I can't I can't do it <laughs> I'm a coward and then I didn't know that <laughs> no you didn't and then I came and put this guy in as my sleeper because I ain't no coward I'm That's, talking yeah, about J K one leg. J.K. Dobbins running back for the Los Angeles Chargers, or as they really should be known, the Baltimore Ravens West. Because Giro and Harbaugh are rebuilding that type of a franchise. They brought over Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. Gus Edwards has had a lot of discussion over this offseason. The touchdown opportunities. He was a double-digit touchdown guy last year. He was so good. Yeah, and 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 this is a team that wants to run the ball. I didn't even know the the whole thing you brought up in the news section about in the preseason how well this offensive line is working. How they're this just going to be able to run, man. They're going to be able to run, and this is a 
a one-two punch that has been a one-two punch before. For years, together, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. And it was always that way. It was J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. It was not Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins was the second-round pick. He was the guy who came in in his rookie season, was a running back two for fantasy, and looked great at the end of the year. And it was like, okay, we're all in. And then he's been injured since then. It, it, now he feels he feels like older than Raheem Mostert. He's coming off of an Achilles injury that, you know, usually for running backs, that just means you wash your hands of them and you just say, I'm, I'm fine being wrong. Yeah, this is – sleepers are cracking the door open for the possibility that they these, these guys burst through it, right? Then, like there's a chance – yeah. However improbable that you have great value in these names. He got injured in week one last year. So he's had a, a long time. You know, if, if you have to get injured last year, you hope it's early in the season. Week one is the longest time you can have for recovery to this point. People are saying he's looking healthy. He he looks healthy. I watched a mic'd up. How he, many legs does it appear that he has? One and a half. I think he's okay. got one and a half legs. Okay. Which JK one point five legs. We have seen him be fine with one strong leg. He talked about that a couple of years ago. Well, so in no no no. <laughs> yes, no, he was. He really was. In I know, Grant, but it did come to bear. Well, right. I'm not saying that he's gonna be healthy and not get re injured and all of that, but he, all of that's baked in already. He's in the twelfth round. This is not an expensive pick. I cannot – when you talk about J.K. two legs – or one leg, sorry. <laughs> I cannot not think about the uh, classic M. Night Shyamalan lady in the water. Yeah, the, the oh, work – strong arm? The guy that had one giant arm and one <laughs> tiny arm. <Do> you, <laughs> yeah, well, I think the science Shout out to the four work. people that saw that movie with me. <laughs> because that's what it looked like in – That's what, what it looked like in camp, dude. In 2022 when – he, he he plays four games, he gets hurt, and he misses six weeks. And he comes back, and he's – like, it's the Adrian Peterson hitch run, uh -huh. but it is it is so exaggerated. He's dragging one of his legs. It's like he's one so, of his – Half of him is so fast, and the other one was body. dragging. It was – it was unbelievable. Um, but One in, of his legs doesn't want to play in the NFL, <laughs> and the rest of them does, and they're at, at war. Yeah, so in Greg Roman's offense in Baltimore – just as a reminder, Dobbins averaged 5.9 yards per carry, and that includes the season when he was recovering from the ACL and we coined him JK One Leg. The positive game scripts should be, be there for the Chargers. They have the second easiest strength of schedule, according to Warren Sharp. They've made massive offensive line improvements, and we talk a lot about you want a guy you can cut after week one if he's not – I mean, you're going to know week one. Is he the – first man up in this offense is he playing ahead of Gus Edwards between the 20s I know when they get to the goal line they're going to give it to Gus Edwards but if J.K. Dobbins is healthy and looks good he's going to be the starting running back for what will be a good offense that will score a lot that will of points never abandon the run that wants to run the ball and and you, you get him for free late in drafts and I know he feels old but he is not who's older him or Ramondre Stevenson that's a joke Ramondre. That's a joke. Who's older? Him that or is no, 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 no. Uh, That's I got, I got true. A, I got a better one for you. Who's older, him or Jalen Warren? Jalen Warren is a year <laughs> younger than Ramondre Stevenson. J.K. Dobbins sure is the, only... the one leg isn't older, at least. Uh, well, well one, one of those legs is forty-two years old. Yeah, does <laughs> it have is, cadaver parts in there? He is twenty-five oh years old. That's if he's healthy. Which he says he is. He looks well, healthy. The he camp said that last healthy. year. We're leaving that alone. I'm just saying. Let everyone the, else say In the 12th it. round, he might be That's one wild. of the steals of the draft. The Ramondre one is insane. Yeah. Ramondre looks like a player in Dynasty. You'd be like, that's a nice pickup. Yeah. That's a player I'm going to have for a while. So, yeah, it's, it's an interesting name. Let's take a break and jump into some mailbag. Now, an ordinary podcast would move on. At this point, from the sleeper section, I've I've hit the the drop. We're moving into the mailbag, but we're not an ordinary podcast. And sometimes, when you are scrolling the show doc and you notice that Jason has a bonus sleeper pick, yeah, and me and Mike didn't throw oh. any in there, but but Jason's bonus sleeper pick is from the very same team in which his sleeper pick came from. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, you you I you can throw to me right now. Off the top of my head, I can give you a bajillion better sleepers than this guy. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Jason, I'm yeah. reading in here. This does not 
I don't know if it's a typo. It does say Quentin Johnston. It does say Quentin Johnston. Don't, remember me talking don't about Don't do how, this to yourself. Remember me talking what a about huge how decision. you want to be able to drop a guy in week one. I mean, Quentin Johnston, we don't know for sure where he is on the pecking order. He might not be a starter. However, he was a first-round rookie last year who's coming into year two and could, <laughs> could still be the number one wide receiver for this team. Yep. So I'm just saying that's the type of pick that. Are like, you drafting Keon Coleman or Quentin Johnson? Oh, Keon Coleman. Okay. I mean, yes. Quentin yes. Johnson is basically an undrafted gym. He, he's I've, I haven't seen him drafted in any of the leagues I'm in, uh, the you know that aren't super deep like best ball leagues. And so, yeah, I mean, he, he's either a starter. He's going behind Ladd and and Palmer. So he's, he oh, has, I would take Ladd ahead. Of, I would take all those guys. Here's ahead of. the ADP though, Jay Dontavian Wicks, Quentin Johnston, Darnell Moody, Adam Thielen. Oh, really? All those guys? <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Wow. Huge. Huge is the worst of those, but he still profiles right. as someone that could do something. He's something. All right, we're moving on. Mailbag. Mailbag. Anytime Quentin Johnston is mentioned on this podcast, Papa Josh just lights up because he, you know. I think, I think he's Papa so Josh excited. I traded him. that guy away. Yeah, he's Oh, out. you got rid of him. Yeah, yeah. I got rid of him. So we I don't just have had to, to hype him up. Wasn't for a while. he part of the big dynasty acquisition you made when you sold for the future? Uh, uh, for a little while, and then you moved him. Out. Wait, what'd you move him for? I don't remember. Something <laughs> way better. Yeah, it doesn't uh, actually, matter. Actually, a second and a third, and Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin. Oh, okay. You guys co-manage this team, don't you, over there? Yeah, we do. That's a pretty good trade. So if, yeah. you, if you've traded Quentin Johnston in dynasty, you won the trade. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man. Why did I ask? Yeah, the compensation doesn't matter. <laughs> Oh, all right. Let's jump in. Will in North Carolina. By the way, if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click that submit a question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Leave us a voicemail question. Will in North Carolina says, would you rather have in a 16-team PPR league? Okay. So this is a thinned out league. A.J. Brown and James Cook. So that combination. Okay. Or. Jonathan Taylor and Marvin Harrison Jr. Th this is an easy AJ Brown and James Cook for me. Really? Yeah, I, I'm I'm very 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 bullish and confident on both of those players. I do lean that direction. I think the consensus opinion would be you're getting much more of a guarantee with Taylor than Cook, and then you can debate the Brown Harrison situation. But I I agree. I'm on that side. That's where I go to. Andrew in Wisconsin says, hello, ballers, longtime listener. My question is, is, De is Devon A. Chan worth a first-round pick in a dynasty format? Nope. I'm the my guy, and I love him. But, I, I mean, if I'm drafting a running back in the first round of a dynasty startup, which I don't almost ever do, that, that running back is going to be named Bijan or Brees. Otherwise, I'm getting a wide receiver. I, I just – we, you know, if if you're newer to Dynasty or you haven't played in it long enough, the running back turnover is just insane. And some of these young studly wide receivers, they're going to play twice as long. So I'm 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 usually I'm usually going into my fourth round, my fifth round before I often grab a running back in startup drafts, just because I'm I'm building a foundation for the future, and then I'll collect the old men at the end of the draft to help me this year, like the Raheem Mostert that no one wants in a Dynasty league. So that's just the way that. That I personally play. If I'm in the back of the first and I'm really, really want a running back, it'd be you're looking at Gibbs. Because I would take Gibbs over HN. Who, little update, is expected to practice next week. All right, let's go. Which is delightful. All right, let's go here. Larson in Alaska. What's up, ballers? What What's up? up? I hear you guys talk about the quote zero RB strategy on the podcast. What exactly does that mean to you guys, and what running backs are you targeting for that type of strategy? Thanks, guys, and also hashtag Team Big Shimmy for okay. life. Whew. So, right. yeah, yeah, absolutely, zero running back. Uh, it was a strategy that started to gain momentum, I don't know, about eight, eight years ago, maybe even ten, but uh, Sean Siegel, shout out to him, just incredible fantasy football mind. He's the one. Uh, who got that idea out there. And the whole the, – the concept of zero running back is 
Running backs are more likely to get hurt, so they're fragile for spending high draft capital. Meanwhile, wide receivers are more likely to not get hurt, more likely to hit. And if you can load up on those types of players and, the, and also including uh, elite tight ends, which there's more options now for elite tight end, but back, you know, back then it was one or maybe two guys, and if you can secure them, you're trying to get as many top 24 wide receivers as you possibly can. So that, that's the whole idea of it. And then that running backs you draft later, because the players in front of them are going to get hurt, they gain value over the course of a football season as opposed to lose value. And you're there's tons and tons of options this year. It doesn't I, mean I you draft it's it doesn't mean you draft zero running backs. Correct. It means you're starting your draft yeah. with zero running backs. Yeah, you, you, Gus Bus, Jerome Ford, some of these later round op opportunities. The Cowboys yeah, the Cowboys backfield. Yeah, you'll 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 start so heavy elsewhere. You know, you're not going to get your first running back until at least the sixth round, usually seventh or later. And then the end of your draft, you're just going to load up on a ton of those guys, so you can you can get a couple of the either the old guys. Uh, you know, if you're if you're in the eighth round and Mostert's there, what a great starter. Or Jerome Ford is great because he's going to start the season well. And then you want to have a couple of those insurance backs as well. Grab those rookies. Grab those the the Blake Corums and the the Trey Bensons and the guys that. You know, an injury in front of them will make a mad dash for the waiver wire because yeah, they'll you be already great, have them. and you already have them, and now your team gets stronger while you've got loaded yeah. up studs. And, at and one big hit on any of those changes the dynamics of your team for the whole season. Yes, yes. Your another team gets like they lose, right? They're like they're out of the running out, and you are even an even stronger contender. And also, we're throwing it like this is it's more focused on if you're in a PPR and you're playing. You're starting like three wide receivers mm -hmm. and a flex because you're just you're loading up on guys who are going to get cheap points. All right, I do want to circle back before we close the show down to the announcement we made at the very tippy top. Mega <laughs> uh, very frightened always. Um, the Mega Bowl, you can join it right now. It's a free entry for every Foot Clan supporter, and you can go to megalabowl.com for that information and if you would like all of the details on our new ultimate tier of the foot clan membership you can go to jointhefoot.com so uh very excited about both of those things we've got busts and values on tomorrow's episode we're debuting the take swap on thursday and a mock draft on friday jason yes have, have you reconsidered your bust pick Oh, uh, I, 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 please, please. No, I'm, no, I'm going to stick okay. to it. Well, but I have reconsidered my Quentin Johnson sleeper. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's off the board. He's off the board. There's just too many other guys. <laughs> 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 All right. That is going to do it. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow. See you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.